This is Parker here from testpropchampions.com. That's a website dedicated to helping students at all levels reach their academic goals through time management, productivity, learning strategies, and test taking strategies, study skills, and a whole lot more. We have a huge archive of free articles and videos on our site. That's www.testprepchampions.com. So check that out if you're interested. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate your GPA by hand. So before I do that, though, I want to mention that I do have a free and easy to use GPA calculator on my website, testrepchampions.com. So you can check that out. I'll put the link down below. Um, so I recommend using that if you want to calculate your GPA fast. Doing it by hand, it's going to take longer and it's slower. It's not necessarily that hard to do once you see the formula and you understand how to do it, but it is more tedious. It requires more steps. And so if you're like a junior or senior and you've got a lot of courses to factor in, um, there's a higher chance of making a mistake somewhere just because if you get one number a little bit off or plug something in wrong, um, you know, the whole thing is going to come out wrong. But that being said, it is relatively simple to do. It's just tedious. Um, and so you can use the GPA calculator if you want. But if, say, you're in a math class and you need to know how to do it by hand, or if you just want to know how to do it by hand for your own reasons, that's totally cool. I'm going to get into the video now and show you how to do that. Okay, so there are several different ways to write the formula for calculating GPA. I'm going to show you two of them. One is the most commonly used version, and the other is a version that I made up um, I didn't make up the formula, obviously. They're both the same exact formulas. It's just different ways of writing it. And for people who maybe aren't math people or are even slightly math phobic, which I'll admit I kind of was at one point, the second way I think it, it makes more sense and like it's more clear. Um, but the first way is the most commonly written version. So I'm going to circle that here. So let me show you that first. And so basically what you do is you need to look at this grade value scale. This is the most important thing here. And this just shows you that on a 4.0 scale, which every single college uses, um, I, it's very rare to find anything but a 4.0 scale for colleges. And so what you do is you would look at the value that corresponds to each grade. So let's say you get an A- minus in a class that corresponds to a 3.7, uh, a B corresponds to a 3.0, etc., etc. et cetera. And so basically what you would do is you're going to take, so say you've got an A in a class, right? So you take this 4.0 and you would put that in here for grades. Okay, so you don't put in like A here to the formula or B in the formula for grades. You put in this grade scale value and then you multiply by the number of credits for that class. And so the top part of the formula here, the numerator, which is the top part of the fraction, that's going to be the sum total of all of the grade scale values times the credits. And then what you do is you add up the total number of credits for each class and that's going to go down here in the denominator or the bottom part of the fraction. And so that's going to give you your GPA. And then the formula, these, this symbol here, this represents sum. If you're not a math person, it just means sum. It just means basically add everything up in the numerator. And even if you are a math person, you might not have recognized that that's the symbol for sum just because my drawing skills are pretty bad. But that's what that means. And so... Um, that's how you get your GPA using this formula. And so, like I said, they are both formulas are the same thing. It's just that the difference is just that how you write it. And so now I'm going to cover the second formula, which is my way of writing it. I just think it's helpful. So basically what you do is you take your scale value for course one and you multiply by the number of credits for course one. Then you add that to... Okay, so then what you do is you would add that to the course two scale value multiplied by the number of credits in uh, course two. And then I put this little ellipsis here because you would just keep going. So for if there's the third course here, you do the same thing. You take the third course, uh, your scale value for the grade, multiply that by the number of credits for that course. Okay, that goes in parentheses and then that's going to get added on and then you would just keep adding on and so on and so forth until you've entered in all of the classes for either that semester or all of the classes. If you're doing your cumulative GPA, you would just keep going and going and going. So let me just kind of show you an example here. So let's say that, okay, so let's say that you're, you take like a history class. I'm just making these up as we go here. And so in your history class, that's your course one. Uh, let's say that you get an A. So for course one scale value, you would say A that corresponds to 4.0. So you just put a four here. And you're going to multiply that by the number of credits. So let's say it's, that's a three credit class. So you put that in here. And I like to put parentheses to make it uh, simpler here, easier to follow. Okay, so then we're going to add that to your second course. So let's say your second course is, I don't know, maybe sociology. 
Uh, let's make it interesting. Say you get an A minus, and so for an A minus, you look over here and you say A minus corresponds to 3.7. So you put in 3.7, and again, let's say that that is a three credit class. So you multiply that by three, Okay, and I'm going to put parentheses and just know that these are parentheses because they don't look like it. Um, and then you add, you keep going here, you add on the next class. And so let's say that the next class you take is, I don't know, let's just say it's a science class. And uh, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's say you get a C plus. So for C plus, you'd say C plus corresponds to 2.3. Put that here, 2.3. And then let's say that that is a four credit class. And this is a three, believe it or not. Okay. And so then what you would do is you multiply this by four if we make it a four credit class. Okay, and then so you would just keep going. So that would be three classes. Um, let's say that you have a fourth class and let's say that that's something like English literature. Let's say you're good at that, so you get an A. So you put in here the grade scale value, which is a four. And let's say that that's a three credit class. And here I'm going to try a three again. All right, that's a little bit better that time. And so we do that. And so then you would add all these up and you would divide that by the total number of credits. So the total number of credits. So let's see, we got a three here, we got a three here, it gives us six. And then we have a four here that gives us 10. We have three that gives us 13. Okay, so let me rewrite this here to make this a little bit more clear. Okay, so I just simplified this uh, to make it easier to see here. And so what we have is 12, because 4 times 3 is 12, plus 11.1. .1. The 11.1 .1 is because we had 3.7 times 3. And then we had 2.3 times 4, that equals 9.2. So that's why we have 9.2 here. Then again, 4 times 3 is 12. So to simplify it, um, I rewrote the numerator, which again is the top part of the fraction. And then I, we are still dividing by 13. So then uh, to, we can add all these numbers up on top here, and that's going to give us 44.2. And I, I didn't do that in my head. I have a calculator off screen. So 44.2. And then we're still going to divide that by 13. So all we did was simplify. So we just took all these numbers, added them up, and we simplified. Uh, it makes it easier to follow, and all those numbers up top here, 12 plus 11.1 plus 9.2 plus 12 gives us 44.2. And so if you're a math person, you probably already know the answer here. You're probably way ahead of me, but um, I want to show every step here. So then what we do is, okay, so you divide that by 13, and that gives you 3.4. All right, and so that's how you would calculate your GPA for that semester with those four classes. Just like this, it gives you 3.4. And if you wanted to keep going, like say you wanted to do your cumulative GPA, you would just keep keep adding on here, uh, just keep repeating the process, you know, course one, course two, course three, course four, and maybe you have like, I don't know, some 30, 40 courses or more, uh, you would just keep adding those on there and then um, add up all the credits down here. And it's the same thing really, it's just, you just have to, it just takes a while because you have to make sure you get all the numbers right and get all the details right. But that's basically how you do it by hand. Uh, so that's the video. Again, um, it's a lot easier if you just use a GPA calculator. So I'm going to put that link down below if you want to use the GPA calculator on our website. Um, but this is a way you can do it by hand. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching this video. Um, and I hope that this was helpful for you.